Now what you see behind me here is a wetland meadow. We're in South Buckinghamshire, um, probably the southerly most limit really of my research area. Um, now there haven't periodically been many reports in this particular area, but I would like to postulate that there are big cats here just because of the, the general terrain and it's linked to the other areas where we do get a lot of reports. One of the main reasons why we probably don't get so many reports in this area is just because it's so dense. I mean, we're on the edge of a wetland meadow. Now, meadow is a fantastic habitat, and in Britain, it's been on the news recently quite a lot. We've lost up to 90% of our meadows, and this is one of the main reasons that we're losing a lot of our insects, um, namely um, pollination insects, such as the butterfly and the, the honeybee. Um, now, just to put it on the map, if meadows are rare, wetland meadows are even rarer, and they are such a rich, biodiverse habitat. Many, many reptilians, or yeah, it's an absolute mecca for amphibians and birds, and any other larger creatures that come down here, they have that very dense, lush canopy of vegetation where they can hide away and not be seen at all. Now, you may hear quite a lot of background noise today, and that's because this actual site is not far from the M40 motorway. Um, yet again, I think I've actually come somewhere where I'm not completely supposed to be, but I have set up a camera today. Um, now, there was quite a famous incident, or famous photo, that was taken in this part of South Buckinghamshire by a guy called Paul Keane. Um, I do have the picture on my website. Um, now, this was your classic everybody panther toy on the edge of a field. Um, now, when I looked at the image myself, I had a couple of problems with this image. Um, namely, the head, the, the background chunk of the tree sort of actually came through the head slightly. Um, also, you know, a lot of people roared that you know, it had a white flash on its chest, and black panthers just don't have white flashes on their chest. Now, we've always had a problem with photos in the big cat research, you know. Um, it's not that easy. I mean, if you've got a 100% crystal clear image of a big cat in this country, most people jump up and say, that isn't in this country, or that's in someone's back garden. So, no matter what we do, we're always going to have a slight struggle on our hands. But, even that said, you always have to investigate every possibility. And I looked at that photo, and admittedly, yes, it, it does have all of the hallmarks of perhaps a cuddly toy. But, what I want to just delve in with that photo in particular is, it was probably taken not far from here. We're talking about maybe 300, 400 metres from where I stand is pretty much where that photo was supposed to be taken. Um, now, usually based just on that photo, I would not have come down to these areas. It is right on the urban fringe of London. Uh, the particular area I'm in at the moment is known as the Cong Valley, um, which is 40 square miles of wetland habitat, and the Grand Union Canal comes straight through there. Now, two of the things that I want to explain away about that photograph are the trunk going through the head um, in the background, like um, as if someone had played with the opacity on Photoshop, and the white flash on the chest. Now, a lot of people say when you get a picture on a phone, mobile phone, why can't anyone get a clear picture? Well, when you're zooming into a, a field edge that's perhaps 500 metres away with a mobile phone, do it, take an experiment, you know, go out there and zoom in, and you just look how blurry that picture is. Mobile phones, and even most modern cameras, you know, that they have trouble zooming in that far without being blurry. Um, so, on the one hand, if people are saying it can't be a big cat because it has a white flash in its chest, actually, to me, that looks like it could have a bone or, or, or it's, it's chewing on something. Um, not necessarily at that resolution, it could be that positive that that's a white flash. Um, also, movement. Um, with photographs, sometimes if a cat moves very quickly, um, you may get a bit of the background in the shot. 
Um, now, maybe, maybe that picture on that cat, the, the, the opaque um, tree that sort of come, seems to come through the head, maybe the cat moved its head quickly backwards and forwards and you just got a little bit of the tree. So I'm not trying to completely excuse the fact that perhaps it was a fake. However, it is not the photo itself that has lent my ideas about perhaps why it could be real. Um, this particular area, what is so interesting about it, doing research and coming out here and just seeing how many places there are to hide and noticing that there is a huge green corridor coming down the west side of London um, makes me feel that this is probably one of the best habitats for le leopards if, if, if they were here or, or any of the big cat species, the three big cat species that we see in the UK, the puma, the leopard or the lynx. Um, so them things have actually brought my attention to this particular spot where I would not usually research but that picture, although on initial analysing, you think, don't know, looks a little bit like a cuddly toy. It's not just the picture that goes with the story. And, you know, big cat researchers, we're too quick sometimes, I think, to, to criticise and, you know, we want to research but we want to sort of be credible at the same time, you know. Sometimes you've got to ask the other questions around um, an image, you know, go to the area. What, what is it about that area that could possibly be cat habitat? Is there a corridor that runs through there? And, you know, when I viewed that image in particular, I looked at, we have the railway line, we have the green corridor on the outside of London. Um, if any of you watch the weather, um, focus in on London and notice the large reservoir, um, reservoirs that come down the west side of London, just on the urban fringe. That's the valley I'm in now. Um, and I've talked about urban le leopards and uh, places to hide near the city. This would be a perfect place, um, which I think adds weight to the, the, the keen um, photograph. Uh, just on that point, I'd just like to say on the subject of big cat researchers, I think it's very, very important to, okay, on the one hand, keep up to date with what's going on in the wider countryside, but also you have to specialise in one area. You have to follow and log the reports of your particular area, get to know that area intimately. You know, spend a night there, you know. It's not until you begin to learn of the other animals and how they move and how the subtle dynamics of how your particular close landscape works around you that sets you on the pursuit of the big cats in your area. Um, following research and sightings is great, but I really think that more researchers need to really focus on their areas and really, really get to grips with the landscape, the corridors, where the cats could be, and, you know, invest in camera traps. I think I'm on my fifth camera trap now, which is actually quite moderate for some guys. Um, some guys have got a lot more than that. But, you know, I think to get the evidence, um, I think you're going to need to really, really start investing in more cameras and, and get to know your area, look at the sightings, overlap lap these sightings on maps, and, and really try and play dot to dot and work out the patterns of what's going on in that particular landscape. Um, some of the researchers, like myself, you know, we also want to be involved in the greater research, and, and, and that's credible in itself, you know. It's good to see what's happening in other places, but it's also good to know your areas really well. And I just want to stress that fact. Um, also, you know, we have to just look at the continued conservation efforts around cities like London and, and some of the, the, the habitats and perhaps how some of the smaller animals interact with the ecosystem as a whole. Um, some of the things that I've noticed today walking around the valley is there's a, so many places to hide, but there's a lot of deer, and this place is so close to the urban fringes of London. It's really, really made me wonder, you know, I've been here all day, I haven't seen anyone. Um, I mean, it's just a fantastic place to hide, and um, I'm looking forward to putting a few more cameras up here and just to see what sort of results I get. But just something for you guys to think about, you know, if you're interested in big cat research or really, really look at the sightings and really try and extract extra data other than the sightings. Um, you know, Google horse attacks. 
you know, sometimes horses get attacked and people think they've been attacked by people and, or, or, or even dogs go missing. Just, just check out missing cats, missing dogs. See if you can find other information around the cat sightings that maybe there's a lot of lost dogs here, more so in this area than, than this area. Maybe, maybe, you know, that's because they're being predated, predated by an animal. Um, look into these things. It all becomes a part of a growing overall picture that we want to gain when looking for big cats in this country.